In today's video, we are taking a look at the good, the bad, and the ugly, going over all of the bullish signs, the bearish signs, and the warning signs you should be paying attention to. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump on in. Okay, Miguel team, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. In today's video, we are doing a detailed macro and short-term analysis going over the good, the bad, and the ugly. By the end of today's video, you have a very well-rounded understanding of all of the positive and negative aspects of the current price action. Before we do get into it, smash that like button, hit that comment button, and subscribe to the channel. We post daily videos for Bitcoin focusing on the facts, the data, the technical, and the structural information. No hype, no BS, no emotion, pure raw TA. If that is the kind of content you are interested in, join us on Telegram. It is the first link down below. You'll get access to charts updates, videos, educational posts, news events, and everything you need to stay in the loop of cryptocurrency with Bitcoin and the relevant economic news. If you were interested in joining our VIP, we do have a VIP channel with nearly 700 members. We post trading setups with exact entry prices, exact targets, exact stop losses, trade justification, exclusive analysis, and so, so much more. Every single trade we post has exact entries, exact targets, and stop loss prices. You'll also get access to our group chats, our general chat, trading chart and education, education chat, news, help, daily video, and trade setup chat. If that is what you're interested in, go ahead and contact me in the pinned comment of the free channel by clicking my name or click these links for more inf information. Let's go ahead guys and jump into the video. So as we can see, Bitcoin is very much still in the same position it has been for the last couple days. Over the last three or four days, we have seen Bitcoin dip quite significantly as a consequence of the breakdown of that major short-term 63k support, resulting in what was one of the largest days of liquidations we have seen for Bitcoin since April 2023. As per our liquidation data over here, we can see a massive amount of long liquidations occurring, resulting in Bitcoin again dropping into that 58k region temporarily underneath the major 60,000 support. So the market is in a very shaky position and the purpose today is, of today's video is to discuss well what are the bullish aspects what things on the charts are still bullish why are the bulls potentially still in control and what are the positives what are the what are the positives of the market as we speak we'll also be discussing the warning signs what are the negatives why are the charts potentially going to see more downside and then we'll go over the ugly which is if we were to see these warning signs come to fruition, what response would we see on the chart? So a very detailed analysis today. Let's start on the market data. Moving to the market data, 24 hour volume is down 17%, sitting at 96 billion. 24 hour liquidation, liquidation is pretty much exactly the same, 92 million over here, 1.6% up in the last 24 hours. Of the last 24 hours of liquidations, a very even split between 48 million in longs and 43 million in short positions. Taking a deep dive into the short-term price action, we can see over the last 24 hours, really not all that much has occurred. Bitcoin saw a nice strong move upwards to around 62.5K, where we have seen downward price action ever since, currently now sitting just under 61,000 in that major high time frame support region. Again, building up these long positions only to liquidate them on the way down and liquidating these short positions on the way up as a... Uh, as a lot of late shorts were taken upon the breakdown of 60,000. So not that much happening, still a lot of chop going on with the price action. One of the warning signs we do want to talk about today and we'll come back to is the DXY. We'll discuss that in a moment, but looking at it from a structural perspective, we can see the DXY is still very much in a downtrend. This is a trend line I am very much paying attention to and we'll come back to this trend line in just a moment. All we're going to say for now is the DXY does break through this trend line. We can see we are very likely to see continuations into this yearly resistance at 107 to 108. Of course, we have now seen the breakout on the RSI. We do have two days remaining until this four-day chart actually closes, which would validate this breakout on the RSI. So we are paying attention to that. Of course, if the DXY does continue upwards, the strength of the dollar rises. Generally, when we see the strength of the dollar rise, we see risk assets across the board, S&P 500, Dow Jones, traditional markets, and of course, um, 
markets such as cryptocurrency see a bit of, of a downtick. So we have to pay attention to that. Looking at S&P 500 again on the short term, not too much happening over here. You can see we've had a strong move upwards ever since the break of that 5,500 region. We have reached highs of around 5,580. Again, guys, what we do hold this prior high point, structurally, we are very much in a strong uptrend. We have our lows, we have higher lows developing this entire time. As we've been developing these higher lows, we've been clearing these prior high points, clearing these prior high points, resulting in this overall uptrend continuing until we invalidate these prior highs and break under, we're not going to see any signs of major macro weakness. Uh, this short-term weakness should be considered healthy corrections. If we break below this prior high, that would be a strong indication of high time frame weakness. And if we break below that low, that will be an indication of a high time frame trend reversal. So that is it for that. Let's go ahead and jump into Bitcoin. A quick word from today's video sponsor before we do. I wanted to briefly interrupt today's video to discuss the two major exchanges we use on this channel, BitUnix and BingX. If you sign up via my links down below, you'll get access to 15% lifetime discounts on all of your trading fees, including up to $5,000 in bonus trading rewards. BitUnix is a global no KYC exchange offering access to absolutely everyone from every country on the globe. Whether that be trading spot or futures, there are over 200 trading pairs with access to 125x leverage, making it the perfect exchange for day traders. If you are interested in another option, we have Bing X. Bing X, as like BitUnix, has access to over 200 spot pairs, large liquidity pools, and 125x leverage. However, they do have a pending KYC regulation, and they don't offer services to the USA, the Netherlands, and Canada. So go ahead and check out those exchanges via the links down below and join us where we trade on BitUnix and BingX. Let's get back into the video. Okay guys, let's go ahead and jump into Bitcoin and before we get into the good, the bad and the ugly, we need to talk about what Bitcoin is doing structurally, the key levels and then we can jump into all of those nitty and gritty things. So Bitcoin is currently retesting a very, very important level which is $60,000 uh, US dollars. $60,000 probably the most important level on the chart as we're speaking from a horizontal perspective right now, as it marks the prior low for Bitcoin. What we can see is we've had, again, a strong pattern of these higher lows developed throughout Bitcoin's history since the, last, since the start of 2023. Again, these high points have all been cleared out, resulting in Bitcoin's trend continuing upwards. However, what we are seeing now for the first time is a possible break of that prior low. We do have four days and one hour remaining on that weekly candle where if we were to close a weekly candle underneath this low, that would be a very, very, very bearish sign. So we go ahead and add that to the warning signs. If we were to see a breakdown on the weekly and a weekly close under 61,000, that is going to be a strong warning sign. If we were to see a weekly close underneath the weekly high of the Pi cycle high in 2021, that will replicate a scenario of which we saw back in uh, September, October, November 2021, which was the deviation from that high. Again, a breakdown of 59,000, 56,000 on the weekly would result in the price action closing underneath that local low and could indicate this was a higher low for a potential top for Bitcoin on the short term. Now again, if we do see a top for Bitcoin, it is unrealistic to expect a traditional bear market because we did not see a traditional bull market. Remember, the bear market date range trend is only the expected date range trend because we see a 1064 day bull run from bottom to top. So if we see a shorter bull run, we would also see a shorter bear market. That is also something to consider. We're not going to get into that too much today, but a lot of people are saying we're entering macro bear market. If we do, it would likely be a shorter lived bear market than what we have seen historically, which will usually last around 12 to 13 months. So let's go ahead and jump into a few more things over here. If we zoom into the price action over here, we can see Bitcoin is still very much in this high time frame range. The high time frame range is an area of massive importance. This is a very, very important level as it is the current structural formation for Bitcoin that will determine 
the next directional move. As you know, the price action moves in different phases. We have expansion, okay? And then we have consolidation. We have periods where structural formations are developing, where there is constant battle between buyers and sellers before one side eventually exhausts and the price action continues in the overall direction of which was broken. This is a consolidation pattern. This is a horizontal range. It is a massive high time frame range, but nevertheless, it is still a horizontal range. So while we are seeing Sitting at our area of support, we are assuming this level to be defended as we have seen historically. We have defended this level many, many times in the past, and we are going to assume that this area of support will sustain provided support is able to hold. If we break below the support level, and invalidate the support level, well only then will we be able to say with confidence that support was lost. Until that happens, Bitcoin is ranging between the range high resistance and the range low support. So we're looking at the bullish scenario over here. While Bitcoin sustains this pattern, there is equal probabilities from a structural perspective. We're not factoring in our technicals, we're not factoring in our contextual analysis from economic data, we're talking purely from a structural perspective, there is equal probabilities for a break toward the upside and through our range high, as there is for a break below the support and directional continuation below that range low. So for the bulls, if we're looking at the positive scenarios, while we are sustaining this channel, that is a very strong positive scenario for the bulls. Number two, if we were to take a look at the current trend, the current trend for Bitcoin is represented by this diagonal trend line. This diagonal trend line is a representation of the macro trend for Bitcoin, technically the bull market uptrend. The reason I say bull market uptrend is because the trend initiated from the breakout of that 32K region in October 2023, which is essentially when we started the bull run. This is basically that ETF news really started the kickoff. We really started to believe that ETFs were going to be fully approved around that time. We eventually actually approved ETFs over here, but that is when that ETF news really started to come full force and we saw the market really take a big uptick in price action which triggered the initiation of the bull run and we have been in a bull run ever since this is now an eight month long trend and is representative of the current bull run for bitcoin so number two the second bullish point for bitcoin when we're talking about strengths for the bullish argument is that bitcoin is currently sitting above its macro uptrend provided this trend line is able to sustain bitcoin is technically in a macro uptrend if we were to break below this level that would be a very very bad sign for bitcoin as we would enter a macro downtrend we'll discuss when we come over to that in a second about bearish targets in one moment so as we can see from a diagonal perspective from a trend based perspective and from a structural perspective Bitcoin is still in this pocket over here of bullishness. If we break below this level, the bears take control. But while we sit in this region of support, there is light at the end of the tunnel for the bulls. It is not yet over. And there are a lot of warning signs popping up, which we'll discuss in a second. But until we get that structural and trend-based confirmation of breakdowns, they are only warning signs. So it's a big difference between something being a warning sign and something being validated. So we have to pay attention to that as well. So let's move over now and talk about a few more bullish signs that I want to discuss. If we go to the daily chart over here, we can see that the 200 EMA, sorry, the 200 SMA is currently being respected as well. The 200 SMA is very much lining up almost identically with this major diagonal uptrend, which is a representation of the bull market uptrend. Once more, this is a piece of confluence for not only the bullish case scenario, but also for bearish invalidation of the trend line. Meaning if we were to see a breakdown of the trend line, we would as a consequence also be losing the 200 SMA, which we officially broke above when we entered that bull market into October, 2023. So we have the confluence with that trend line, strengthening the fact that we are still bullish while we remain above, but also strengthening the fact that if we were to break below, we are going to be breaking below a area of triple confluence, which would increase the probabilities of a correction for Bitcoin. So that is also something to keep in mind. Let's now move over to the potential bearish signals for Bitcoin. When we're looking at the bearish signs, there is one major thing popping up that I do want to pay attention to, and this is going to be 
the breakdown of the 62.09 on the RSI. Historically, this level has been a, I would say, a strong indication of directional price shifts more than it hasn't. So we look historically and draw horizontal lines from the point at which this level was broken. We can see from the point at which this level was broken historically, generally we do see directional moves upwards. For the most part, these upwards moves last around 10 or so percent. We'll show you in a second. We can go back in history over here. Uh, pretty much every single time we break above 62.09, we see short term or sometimes even macro directional continuations. We can see over here, almost every single scenario, we saw directional continuations upwards 82%. We saw a directional continuation upwards 20%. We saw a directional continuation upwards 400%. In this instance, we saw a smaller 8%. Sorry, in this instance, we saw 16%. And the prior instance of the breakout, we saw 100%. So we can see how this has acted as basically a macro trigger point for directional continuations upwards. However, it has also acted as a macro trigger point for directional continuations downward. And what we can see is we've actually broken back underneath this level and actually closed that weekly candle below it, which isn't a very good thing initially. This again, drawing our horizontal trend line from the point at which we break below these levels, we can see every single time we break below these levels, we also see directional shifts in price action. Again, sometimes this leads to negligible moves of only a couple percent. Sometimes the downward directional move has already occurred in this instance by the time the price action is closed under. But for the most part, it is a warning sign for potential downward price action that could follow. So as we can see in this instance, we saw a strong 40% move down. In this instance, where well, the price already reached the bottom by the time we saw the breakdown of the RSI. In this instance, we saw a strong 40% move down. In this instance was the bear market. In our prior instances, we saw anywhere between 10 to 15% corrections. So this is a warning sign for Bitcoin telling us that we could potentially see a move toward the downside as a consequence of this negative shifting momentum on the macro charts. Now, there is one thing we have to be aware of. Just because we see the breakdown, it doesn't specifically tell us where Bitcoin is going to go. It just tells us there is a shift in momentum and this shift could have a con uh, direct consequence on the price action as we have seen historically. But it never tells us, well, where Bitcoin is going to go and by how much percent will it drop by. It's just a warning sign. There's another warning sign I do want to discuss, and that is going to be the breakdown of the high short excuse me, EMA of the Pi cycle indicator, which is the yellow line. Historically, as you would know, from the point of which Bitcoin enters that bull market, which is a break of that, that resistance point, okay, that yearly resistance point, let's go ahead and make this line white. We can see right over here and right over here. From that point, until we create a Pi cycle high, okay, until we create a Pi cycle high, Bitcoin historically has sustained above the high short and low short EMAs of the Pi cycle indicator. In this instance, we have broken the high short EMA and we are retesting the low short EMA prior to a Pi cycle high. So that tells us two things. Number one, this is unlikely the top for Bitcoin. We're talking macro top at worst. It could be a local top. We could see a correction for Bitcoin, but it's unlikely this will result in a macro bear market like we have seen in the past. And again, like we said at the start of the video, we haven't seen a traditional bull market from a technical perspective. So it's unlikely we see a traditional bear market as well. We, we haven't seen a long bull market. It's unlikely we see a long bear market. So it could be a local top for Bitcoin, but that also does mean that we are expecting in price action to be higher in a year from down the line or whatever, down the line. So that is also something to consider because historically these Pi cycle tops have marked major macro reversal points for Bitcoin. We have not seen that and we are now breaking down from these trend lines, which is a warning sign. The next thing I do want to talk about is on the daily chart over here, guys, which is the loss of the Gaussian channel. Okay. As we can see, the loss of the Gaussian channel and the bull market support band on the daily, this is an indication of overall weakness. In the prior deviation below support, we did sustain above the bull market support band. In this instance, we can see we have now dropped below the bull market support band, indicating we are now retesting the support from a position of generally more weakness than what we saw in the past. This has slightly increased the likelihood of a breakdown of this support level. But again, like we said already, even 
even if we were to see a breakdown of this support level, provided we really sustain above this macro uptrend, we would assume anything in this pocket region to be deviation from support. That is also something you consider. So as we can see, the general gist of the vibe over here that you should be getting by now is from a structural and trend-based perspective, Bitcoin is still an uptrend. Bitcoin has still hope. Bitcoin is still bullish. From a technical-based perspective, a lot of warning signs are popping up. A lot of moving averages are breaking down. A lot of indicators are flipping bearish. And it's largely a consequence of the fact that Bitcoin has been moving basically sideways for four months now after a period of massive volatility. So that is expected. It is important to take both the technical and the structural and contextualize it and not just focus on one of them. So at the moment, Bitcoin is still a support. Bitcoin has still potential to move upwards. The bullish signs definitely overpower the bearish signs, even though the bearish signs are massively uh, daunting, they're, they're big warning signs, not gonna lie guys, they're definitely worrisome. But until we have the confirmation of the trend breaking, it is unlikely that these are going to be too significant. All they suggest is that the probabilities of these trends breaking will now slightly be higher than before, because we are retesting this area from a position of potential weakness, technical weakness, okay? But again, support is support until it is not. And only when those levels are lost will we see that trend end. And this goes without saying, guys, when you were trading a trend and we've been bullish for Bitcoin, I just want to say we've been bullish for Bitcoin ever since here. Every single dip, we've told you, it's a fake dip. You know, it's a fake out. We're going higher. We're going higher. Every single dip, people are panicking on every dip, panicking on every dip, panicking on every dip. We we're telling you we we're going higher. Why were we so confident that we were going higher? Is because we trade the trend until it ends. Only upon the end of the trend do the probabilities on the higher time frame actually shift. You can try catch these reversals and hope that we're going to continue down every time, but you are going to be more wrong than you are right. And this is where it comes to the point. Eventually, the trend will end. Eventually, the uptrend Bitcoin has been in will come to a close. But if you were buying those dips every time while the trend sustained, by the end of it, you'll be more right than you were correct. Eventually, you're going to be wrong. Eventually, the trend will end. And eventually, if you stand by your method one time, that final time, you will be wrong. You will miss that dip. It will continue down and it will break the uptrend. And that is why it's so important that although you are trading with the trend, you have very clear invalidations of that trend and you know when those breakdowns go from just a potential false breakdown or a potential healthy correction into a macro reversal. So that is a very important note, guys. The trend is your friend until it ends and you'll be statistically more likely to come out with a net profit if you trade with that trend as opposed to trying to time every single reversal, okay? If you wait for those breakdowns on that last attempt, you will be wrong, you'll miss because you will see that breakdown. But overall, the net profit you would have attained through trading that trend the entire way will be significant even if you were to be wrong on that final breakdown. That is a very important point to note. So that is it, guys. There are a few more things I want to talk about from a bullish and bearish perspective, but I think those are really the main ones. The main point of today's video is to show you that there is a big discrepancy between the bearish signals from a technical perspective, which are very present, very aware of, and then the bullish signals from a structural and a trend-based perspective. So let's finish up the video by talking about potential worst case targets and potential best case targets. If Bitcoin were to invalidate the uptrend, invalidate our support, where would Bitcoin go? Well, we can see on our VIPV straight away that we have a massive gap between 60,000 to 52,000. So the logical target for Bitcoin, the logical bearish target for Bitcoin would be a retracement towards $52,000. That would be the target for Bitcoin if we were to break these diagonal and horizontal levels, 52,000. Again, as we did not see a traditional bull market, it's unlikely we see a traditional bear market. So every single one of these levels should be considered a potential reversal point. As you can see, if we lose 52,000, we look for directional continuations into 44 to 41,000 and so so on and so forth. We're looking at these peaks, these prior areas of support for potential reversal points for Bitcoin. That would be the bearish scenario. Again, it's always easier to trade downwards because we have that historical data of price action as opposed to trading upwards into price discovery. 
That is it, guys. Moving over to the short term before we wrap up the video. Short term price action again, Bitcoin's really not doing anything, it's chopping it sideways. As we've said, there's always a risk. We do see one more liquid uh, liquidation wick down into this 57 support area, this macro uptrend. Again, provided a holds, we do expect direction continuations upwards. This is an area of support, so Bitcoin could theoretically bounce from anywhere within this region. For Bitcoin to continue upwards, and most importantly, for this chart to really look bullish in the short term, we need to establish, okay, a higher low. This is our low, this is our high. We need to establish a higher low, meaning Bitcoin need to bounce anywhere above this region and break that prior high point. Upon that occurring, if we break this trend line, that right there is going to be a strong indication Bitcoin is continuing higher. Okay, until then, be cautious, be aware, be prepared. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you guys in tomorrow's video. See you then.